Greetings! This is the ICQ Comets and Cousins YouTube channel. I'm your co-host Dan Green and this is our sixth monthly video. The top comet in the news right now is a binocular comet that was discovered on images obtained with the Palomar 1.2 meter Schmidt telescope on 2022 March 2nd as part of a survey known by the awkward name Zwicky Transient Facility, abbreviated ZTF. Because the comet was found in the first half of March, it was given the designation C-2022 E3, in which the C slash prefix here means that it is a long period comet, and the 2022 E3 means that it was the third comet to have been discovered or recovered in the first half of March 2022. Comets found and designated in the first half of January receive the letter A. Those found in the second half of January receive the letter B, etc. Comets are named for their discoverers, in this case a survey rather than a person, and the name is given parenthetically after the designation. It is important to use the designation 2022E3, not just the name ZTF, when referring to this comet. There are three comets discovered by and named for ZTF in 2022 and another three comets in 2021, so the name is not unique. The discovery was announced on CBET 5111 as shown here, in which the discovery positions on the sky, known as astrometry, and brightness, known as magnitudes, are provided, followed by confirming descriptive observations of its appearance. Note that pre-discovery observations were later identified going back to 2021 July 10, those having been made with the PanSTARRS telescope at Mauna Kea in Hawaii, and the six nights of pre-discovery observations found in 2021 helped to strengthen the orbit through the much longer arc. Then given on CBET 5111, are the orbital elements that are calculated from the astrometry, and astronomers then use these elements to calculate an ephemeris predicting the comet's position and brightness as seen from the Earth in the coming days, weeks, and months. The right ascension, abbreviated RA in these tables, and declination, given in the ephemeris table, give the position of the comet with respect to the background stars, akin to longitude and latitude on Earth, but adjusted for the Earth's tilt with respect to its orbit about the Sun. The table headings delta and r represent the comet's distance from the Earth and the Sun, respectively, in astronomical units, where 1 AU is approximately the distance of the Earth from the Sun, or about 93 million miles, or 150 million kilometers. The elongation is the distance of the comet from the Sun in degrees, such that comets inside 20 or 25 degrees from the Sun are difficult to see due to the Sun's glare, when they are situated in bright twilight as seen from the Earth. The orbital element labeled T is the time of perihelion, or closest approach to the Sun, which in this case occurred on 2023 January 12.78 at a distance Q, of 1.11 AU. The magnitude scale is such that an object becomes fainter with higher numbers. An object near the limit of naked eye visibility in a very dark sky, far from city lights, is around magnitude 6. The stars of the Big Dipper are near magnitude 2, and the brightest planet Venus is near magnitude minus 4. Comet 2022E3 may reach total visual magnitude 4 to 5 in late January and early February 2023, but we still consider this to be a binocular comet even if it reaches magnitude 5, though it might be faintly visible to the naked eye if one finds it first with binoculars. Already back in March 2022, from the early observations spanning less than three weeks, it was known that the comet 2022E3 would be well-placed in northern hemisphere skies in late January and early February 2023, and possibly near the edge of naked eye visibility. The comet has continued to brighten, roughly as predicted nearly a year ago. Two caveats on the comet's predicted brightness. First, comets are known to sometimes undergo bursts in brightness. And second, many comets are also known to break apart near perihelion. So we don't know for sure exactly how this comet's brightness will behave now in late January and early February, 
but the best bets are on faint naked eye visibility and easy binocular visibility during this period. The comet is on a very elongated orbit, one that we call nearly parabolic, meaning that it takes a very long time to orbit the Sun. Comets on elongated orbits like this are invisible when they are far from the Sun, as cometary nuclei are typically only a few miles or kilometers across, if even that large, and it is the entry to the inner solar system that causes comets to produce an atmosphere or visible fuzziness, which we call its coma, and a tail of gases and dust thrown anti-sunward from the sun's warming effects on the nucleus. This sublimation of ices on the comet's surface creates a coma and tail, or multiple tails, of material that is jettisoned from the comet's nucleus and causes the comet to become brighter and brighter, usually, as it gets closer to the sun. When this comet was discovered, it was near total magnitude 16 to 17, which is observable with fairly large telescopes and sensitive CCD imaging cameras. As months of astrometry became available, to lengthen the arc of observation and thus refine the orbit considerably, we know now that the comet last was in the inner solar system about 53,000 years ago, and that it will be ejected from the solar system at the current return due to planetary gravitational perturbations. A recent orbital revision was done by Suichi Nakano last month and is shown here. The orbit diagram shown here depicts the comet with respect to the inner solar system planets on 2023 January 18, courtesy of the SkyLive website. And here is a diagram with the observer situated in the plane of the ecliptic, which is where the orbits of the major planets all reside for February 2nd, a day after the comet passes closest to the Earth at about 0.28 AU, more than 100 times the Moon's distance from the Earth. You can see the comet's orbital plane is inclined quite highly with respect to the Earth's orbit, 109 degrees in a retrograde fashion, meaning that it orbits the Sun in a direction opposite to that of all the major planets, something common for long-period comets. As the comet has brightened, experienced astrophotographers have obtained quite nice images of the comet and its growing tail. The images here of 2022 E3 are all taken from our ICQ Comet Observations Facebook page, which is publicly accessible. As the comet has moved towards the inner solar system in the last couple of months and gotten brighter through greater sublimation of ices in the nucleus into its coma, a good amount of diatomic carbon gas has manifested itself in the form of a greenish color to one side of the coma. This is very common in comets when they become brighter, though it is usually only visible in long exposure photographs and not usually with the human eye. Other fainter comets showing this greenish signature in the last month or so are shown later in this video. There is nothing rare or unusual about green comets in this regard. The green color remains relatively close to the comet's nucleus and does not go far into the tail because sunlight radiation breaks up the volatile diatomic carbon molecules. Color photos also show the other most common color seen in brighter comets, a yellowish white stubby tail that represents the dusty particles carried anti-sunward by solar radiation pressure. Also very visible in photographs of the last month or so is the so-called thin and generally narrow ion tail of charged particles that can show fine structure as the particles interact with the charged particles of the solar wind and is seen in photos here stretching well beyond the visible dust tail. Ionized carbon monoxide in the tail produces a blue color. The sky and telescope diagram shown here depicts the comet daily as it moves through the circumpolar constellations of the northern sky, passing between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper in the last week of January. The yellow numbers give the date in January, followed by the first four days in February. The second sky and telescope diagram shows the comet during the last two weeks of January for 11 p.m. local time at mid-northern latitudes with respect to the local horizon. The best times to observe the comet from a dark sky will be after midnight from mid-January until the end of the month, when moonlight begins to strongly affect the period after midnight. 
It should also be observable before midnight during the last week in January until the moon becomes too bright in the evening sky. Beginning about February 6th, the moon will again be out of the sky for evening viewing. Southern Hemisphere observers will get to see the comet as it moves southward in the sky in February, presumably already fading in brightness. To have good chances of seeing Comet 2022E3 from clear, dark skies, plan your observing session in advance by going to the website called theskylive.com, and you will find a menu listing directing you to resources to help you, including a star map, with the horizon shown depicting the comet with respect to the stars as it moves slowly from hour to hour and night to night with respect to the background stars. You can vary the view according to date and time of night as well as setting the observing location for your specific place on Earth. I give some examples here. Notice that the comet, as depicted in the star map, is much brighter than it will be in reality. In other words, Many or most of the stars depicted will be brighter than the comet will be. If you put your cursor over the comet's image, you will be able to see its altitude above the horizon in degrees, which the horizon is zero and straight overhead is 90 degrees, and its azimuth or compass direction with zero degrees equals north, 90 degrees equals east, etc. Other comets in the news. Our previous news video was posted in November, and we provide a link below to that. Nine comets have been discovered since mid-November 2022, and one comet was accidentally recovered, P-2022 R7. Comet P-2022 V1 was identified with a previously short arc asteroidal object found with the WISE spacecraft in 2010. The nine new discoveries all received new names, with six of them coming from the University of Arizona Survey Program, operating at several locations in southern Arizona, with the other three coming from observatories in Hawaii, two from the PanSTARRS Survey Program, and one from the Atlas Survey. There have been a handful of comets besides 2022 E3 visible in small telescopes visually, and there's a short table given here. We present here, a sample of the many great comet photos that are posted daily at our ICQ Comet Observations Facebook page, representing other comets besides 2022E3 that have been observed in the last several weeks. Comet 29P has been undergoing its frequent outbursts in brightness the last couple of months, with the typical asymmetric outburst coma visible in photos displayed here. A photo taken last month by co-host Charles Morris from last month of, of the frequently splitting comet 73P is shown here, just to the left of the bright star trail at center, in this stacked photo to freeze the comet's image. Comet 81P shows an interesting coma hood and tail in an image obtained on December 1st by J.G. Bosch. Numerous exposures are stacked at the rate of motion of the comet to make it appear stationary while the background stars are trailed. As you can see from the photos here, this is a common method used by astrophotographers where, for the comet that is moving with respect to the background stars. Peter Carson's photo of Comet 119P from January 11th shows a broad, faint dust tail. Comet 2022 V2 has been among the brighter comets lately, and in this color photo taken on January 11th, by Mitsunori Tsumura in Japan, we can see the greenish glow in the outer coma, representing diatomic carbon together with a prominent dust tail some 10 arc minutes long, and a faint thin ion tail towards the east. A black and white photo by Denis Buzinski on January 13th, compiled from 15 60 second exposures taken with a Celestron 14 telescope, shows the broad dust tail pointing towards the northeast. A short, rather broad dust tail is visible in the stacked image of Comet 2021X1, taken on January 11th by Carson, as is a similar feature in Comet 2021Y1, in nine stacked 60-second exposures taken by Jose Chambo on December 19th. And we end this month's news video with a photo by Chambo of Comet 2022A2 from December 25th, one of the other comets near total visual magnitude 10 and sporting the greenish diatomic carbon coma. 
That's our news video for January 23. Subscribe to this channel for our monthly videos on comets, meteors, and other small natural bodies of the solar system. Also, check out our index of other videos for more in-depth information on comets.